not too close. Hi, this is Two Flower. This is my robot. Um, a few years ago, um, it's getting on about five years ago, I started building this robot using a couple of different pieces of software, um, mostly robot operating system called ROS, and a, a package from Parallax called the Arlobot uh, robot system. So this is sort of a conglomeration of a lot of different pieces that have been put together over half a decade in order to make a robot that can navigate a room. Just wanted to start out here with a quick view of the robot up close, and in a minute I'll show you a little more of what it does from a distance. This is up close view of the robot. I just wanted to show you some of the parts. So you can see it has some uh, infrared sensors and also some sonar sensors, so they can just for some up close, like basically obstacle avoidance. You can see there if I put my hand in front of it, it'll actually back up a little bit, and there's some little lights up here to kind of give you an idea. Um, when it's running into things and on the very top right there you can see that it has a little screen to give you an idea of some of the functions as they're happening and the spinning piece there is actually a LiDAR so it's creating a, a two-dimensional view of the room by sending out a laser uh, and then measuring the distance uh, when it comes back. Uh, on board you have a um, laptop down here for running most of the code. Uh, there's also a whole lot of wiring underneath to tell it that is used for connecting the uh, various sensors to the robot. Um, but most of what's happening is being done with robot operating system and the LiDAR you see on top. But right now I'm just remote controlling it. Uh, there's a fun little screen on the side here that can also be used so I can see what's going on without remote control. But most of what I do, I do remote control. The screen is just so that in case something goes wrong, I still have a view of what's going on with the robot. There's a view of the back of the robot. Danny's got lots of fun lights. We'll turn these on. About five years ago, I started building a robot using the robot operating system and um, some pre-built and self-built parts from various places online. Uh, this is the website for the robot operating system. Uh, everything I built for the robot is actually available on my GitHub repository. All the code, all the um, uh, just all the code I wrote, and all the there's actually an installation here so that you can use. Um, the tools that I built to install on your own robot if you were to build one identical to mine using the same parts. ROS typically uses the robot operating system, we often call it ROS, uh, uses a command line interface on Linux, but for my robot I've created a React-based uh, website for running it. So I'm going to actually start up my robot in a moment here uh, from the web page and use this uh, web page to start it into a mode where it's going to make a map and then demonstrate kind of some of how that works. Um, 
I'm going to click the Start ROS button here, and it's going to start ROS. Uh, there's a blog here to give me an idea what's going on as it starts up, so I can get an idea uh, what's wrong if something quits, or just keep track of progress uh, while I wait for it to start up. Uh, ROS has to start quite a few processes on the uh, laptop that's on the robot to get things going. Once ROS has started, there's some more options here. Uh, I'm going to use the option to make a map. Map making process uses something called Slam Toolbox. Uh, it's another open source uh, project that is part of the robot operating system. I didn't build Slam Toolbox, but I integrated it with my robot. And the robot is now ready to make a map. Um, the key part way to visualize your map is using RViz, which is a visualization program. I'm going to start at RViz on my laptop so we can see what the robot sees essentially. And uh, earlier I mentioned that we could see um, that there's a LiDAR on top of the robot. The LiDAR creates a, uh, uses a, a laser, uh, a spinning laser, and it measures the time it takes for the laser to reflect, and from that game gets the distance. So in this view, I'm seeing what the robot sees. Um, if we turn off some of these pieces, we can get a little better idea what just what the, the uh, LiDAR is seeing. These little red lines, that's actually the scan. So that's literally what the robot sees. Turn off all the maps. Uh, this is a representation of the robot. The little br green blinking uh, dots, those are those ping sensors. So that's just uh, visualization inside here of how far away it sees things in the pings. You can see they jump around a lot and don't have much fidelity. Uh, you know, that's why they're not useful for making a map, but they're great for just uh, really uh, edge case obstacle avoidance, you know, in case something gets really close to it when it uh, didn't catch uh, it's trying to make a map. Um, as Ross um, processes the scan, uh, it starts to create a local map. This is right here. This is sort of a heat map showing you uh, where the obstacles are. So you can see it's created uh, these blue lines basically saying this is a wall. Don't get near it. It's sort of the, the, the wall is the, what's showing red now. It's also scan line. The blue is the expansion of that wall saying, OK, well, we, we know how big we are, so if they stay that far away. And then sort of a gradient here. It's basically going to kind of stay in that blue area. And then you can see the more global map. Uh, this is the whole like the whole map that it thinks exists and um, for making uh, path planning. So the local map is for moving point to point right at the moment, and then the global map is for longer term path planning. And then the underlying map, so you can see the white dots here, um, is the actual map that it started to build. And obviously those go any further than it can see. So this is where it can see, so that's um, all that it's going to map out until it can literally see more. Um, So that's Ross making a map. Um, at the moment, the robot is plugged in. So I'm going to go back over the web page here, and I'm going to tell the robot to unplug itself. And I believe it's unplugged itself. We can look up here, and in a moment, this uh, will say plugged in no. So we're really good to go. Laptop's charged, battery's charged, everything's up and ready, so we can start making a map. Um, there's a few ways to do that. We could actually remote control the robot from this page. Just put your mouse on here, start driving. If you look at the screen there, you can see it actually started going back. So I could actually drive it by hand. Um, and if I found it difficult to drive by hand, we could turn on the little video camera over here. And we can see what the robot sees. So I could use that camera and the remote control to drive it around. Uh, that's not the best way though, because it doesn't provide a really smooth movement so it likes to see. So the ideal way to deal with making a map is to actually give it goals within the RViz program. You basically say, look, go to this point in the map, and as you build up goals in the RViz program, it um, makes the map. As you make the goals, it'll go to the goal, and it'll make a map. Now this program is running on my computer, running over the Wi-Fi, so it's able to stream all the data from the robot. The other way you can do it is this is actually a remote control view of the, um, the uh, computer on the laptop. I'm going to start an instance of RViz on the laptop itself on the robot. And that's the one I'm going to use to give it signals. Um, don't have to do that. But in my case, I have a situation where uh, the robot doesn't always respond to signals given remotely. So it's a little hard to see here. 
but I'm going to point to a spot over here and I'm going to draw a line. And the point is where to go and the line is the direction. So you can see, there it is. This is the goal. So there's the goal and the arrow is pointing in the direction. And as you can see, it's actually making a path to make get to that location. So it's going there. And it will do what it needs to arrive there. Now something you might notice is as it goes there, the local planner is actually changing what it's doing. So it doesn't care what's over here anymore. The local planner just has a little box that it works inside of to create that sort of heat map of where the obstacles are. But meanwhile, the global map is getting bigger. It's expanding, so there's more area that it knows about now. And it's also the actual permanent map, which is this part that's actually the little the lines where it's starting to make gray dots. That's the map that we can actually save out later and use for future navigation in the same area. So it's starting to actually make a permanent map. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to move on into the next room. So you can see this little doorway there, and it's going to go ahead and just wander right through that doorway. And there it goes. Um, and one thing that's important is even if the uh, the laser scanner doesn't see something that it might run into because maybe it's a little lower, a little higher, you may have your cat in the way, um, those ping sensors will stop it from moving even if the uh, robot operating system tells it to drive. This again is just the uh, video view of the robot itself. And here we have a camera that's in the room. So between the two of these, get a pretty good view of what's going on. There it goes, over there. You can see it's through it. Oh, there we go, it's finally on the camera in the other room. Yeah, well, we just ran right into that little chair there. Oopsies, but let's move it along fine. And I'm going to keep going. And as you can see here, the important part I'm trying to get across here is that this map is building itself. It's slowly starting to look like the room that it's in. Just go on over here, new goal. So the point is I'm just giving it new places to go so that it can map out that room. Now you can see the robot's in the middle of the room there. You can see on the map it's in the middle of the room. I'm going to go ahead and tell the robot to go into the next room over, which will give us an opportunity to start mapping that room. So here we go. See the path that's planned go through that doorway right there. Here it is, slowly turning around. There it goes. He's gone to the next room. Never mind our little plumbing problems in the corner there, please. And as you clear this onboard camera here, nothing to do with um, the robot's operation. It's just for me to see what's going on. Now you can see the map over here has gotten pretty complete. In fact, if we turn off some of the extra stuff, and we can go ahead and turn off the ping sensors because we don't need to see those. It's driving us nuts, right? Um, I don't mean turn them off. I just mean turn off our visualization of them, right? So here we go. We actually have a pretty complete map of the room. So at this point, we can navigate this map. We can place markers on the map and have it go anywhere in the map we want. Here, uh, I'm going to actually tell it to go back to the original location. So I'm going to tell it to go back here in that far other room. So I make a little line, tell it to go there. There we go. You can see here, it's made a path all the way through this door, through the middle room, through the next door, and into the next room, and it's making its way back.
So now entirely based on the LiDAR data that is obtained since the time we turned it on, it has scanned the room as it moved through it, made a map of the room, and then it's able to move through the room simply by choosing any location in the room. So this is cons uh, called a simultaneous, simultaneous localization and mapping, uh, meaning that it was able to localize itself within the room and to make a map of the room. And then after that, we can use it for navigation, which would be to simply go to a point in the room once it knows where the room is. Um, different ways of using this could be either you could always be making a map as you go, but typically it's more accurate to at some point freeze the map and you have a place where you, uh, the location isn't going to change. So you just load up the map every day and tell it where to go. And you could even give a series of locations to navigate through. Now that we're back to our home location, I'm actually gonna reset the whole program. Shut that off. Shut that off. I'm going to start up. I'm going to start up Ross again. Notice we have a lot of telemetry here. Tells me the battery charge, um, whether the laptop is fully charged or not, whether it's plugged in or not, whether it has a map loaded. Um, there's sensors on board. This will tell me about the obstacle sensors, whether the runs in front or back um, are detecting something, whether it's stopping, um, whether it knows that it's safe to proceed, it's not safe to proceed, um, and they'll light up different colors. So this time, instead of making a new map, I'm gonna load a map that I had before. This is my basement map, 2020-21 to March. We're loading the map. Now this map has a whole bunch of waypoints already set on it. These were set by using, once I load the map, I can send it to a location and wherever it is in the map, I can save that location. Give it a name, it'll show up on this list with the map. So just to make it clear what's going on, we're gonna start up Arvis again. The difference between what you, see, what you saw before and what you see now it's the same room, so it looks the same. The difference to what you see now, which is on before, is loaded. It's not the map we made before. It's a map I made earlier in the day, but it's the same room, so it looks the same. I'll step over here. I'm going to pick one of these destinations. So this is going to be the middle um, of the playroom, which is this large room over here. So I'm going to press the middle of the playroom. There we go. It marked it on. The, it actually now marked the spot. There it goes. So not only can I make maps and save maps, I can also set locations within the map and then name them, and they'll quickly immediately be mapped to a button, which I can just push and sell to go to that location. There it goes. Go up here and pick a different location. This is where I was sitting on the day. I laid it, I labeled it my chair. I should come over and get near this chair. You can see. And there we go. He's looking at my chair. I'm gonna come over near the Dalek. Yes, we're building a Dalek. There it is. Presumably looking at the Dalek. And we can send it off into the other room. How about the stairs in the den? Way over here. And again, you can clearly see these are just waypoints that were set. There it goes out the door. Bye bye.
And as you can see, it's getting pretty close to the stairs. Just like a Dalek, this robot will not handle stairs. Here we go, all the way back here. You can see the red line is overlaying over the black line. The red line is the actual scan data coming in real time. The code is matching up the red line with the map. And that's what Slam Squawk is doing to, of course. Matching up. Here it comes. Notice the laser is actually hitting the camera a few times, and the camera's uh, CCD is uh, able to pick up the infrared a little bit. You would never see the laser with your, with your eyes. None of this fanciness prevents us from just using the good old fashioned remote control. Go left a little bit, forward a little bit, left a little bit, a little more. This website works great from a smartphone too. You can even take the robot outside and drive it down the sidewalk with a remote with a phone. Doesn't do great making a map without any walls though. The robot has sensors, the ping sensors. That's just a name brand basically for the sonar sensors. You can turn them off, tell them to ignore it. The robot also has floor sensors. If you try to drive the robot off of uh, um, over something, it, it will see that and it may actually stop. Um, presumably, it won't run over your foot um, if you is going slow enough. Also, has close sensors. There's little sensors across the bottom. If the ones at the very front uh, no longer see something close enough, basically a floor, they expect to always see something within the correct distance to the floor. Uh, as soon as they don't, the robot stops, prevents it from going off stairs. It also is aware of when it's plugged in, so it won't drive, and you can turn any of these on, on and off. Uh, you can see it has infrared sensors. Uh, those are generally turned off because they don't really work very well, uh, especially under infra uh, infrared, especially under um, fluorescent lighting. Uh, they interfere a lot with infrared sensors, so those I don't really use. The pings do fine, of course, it has its own ability to navigate with the LiDAR. Um, you can tell it to be quiet. You can turn on the fancy blank lights. Those will come on in a minute. Those are actually run off of an Arduino that's on board. There they go. Also, if we get ourselves into a dark situation, we have a couple onboard lights. There's a light. There's a light. A lot of lighting on board. And all these information, you can see, uh, it gives you a speed limit. So the backup speed limit is 81. Basically, as it gets close to something, based on the ping sensors, it'll slow itself down. So that basically, as it gets closer and closer to a wall, it'll stop. It'll lower its maximum speed so that it doesn't have any. Uh, so there's not much possibility of running into the wall because it was moving too fast to break itself. Um, there's some other things too. Keeps track of the uh, power to the right and left motors. Um, it has, uh, has a uh, gyro on board to give kind of a heading. It doesn't really use that. You can actually see what's happening is it got bored. So it picks a destination and it's just going to go there by itself. Again, destinations that I set in the website. And if you don't do anything after long enough, 
it'll just start picking destinations off of the list. So it's navigating to the Dalek location at this moment. So if you leave it alone, it'll just start wandering around the room using the destinations you set. Hope you enjoyed the video of the robot. And if you want to build your own robot, I take I suggest you get into Robot Operating System. Uh, the particular kit that I used to start this one doesn't exist anymore, but I can say there's a lot of other options out there. Uh, you can look up the TurtleBot, and that's a popular one. Um, or just start digging into ROS and start learning how to work with motors and uh, build your own.